good morning uh, from Switzerland or good day, depending on uh, which part of the world uh, you are now. Uh, this is a talk uh, about the European approach or the European process of uh, tackling cancer in a changing world where war is a major component that uh, drives uh, change and uh, challenges. And uh, this talk is about the so-called EU missions. EU missions is uh, a new concept and probably a European concept on tackling the major challenges that trouble not only the medical uh, community, but uh, the society and the political institutions and economy and environment as a whole. The European Union has uh, in the last years developed five missions. Uh, one of them and the only one that focuses explicitly on health is the mission on cancer. And this is the topic of today's presentation. There are, of course, the traditional means of tackling cancers, and these uh, include first and foremost clinical care, respective research at basic and translational level, and uh, also civil society organizations, patients associations, and regulators and policy makers at national, local, and international level. However, in Europe, what we have seen is that this approach that we had until now, this approach that is more or less the same everywhere in the world is not enough. And it's not enough because the prevalence of cancer is increasing. More people are dying every year, 1.3 million people just in Europe. The Not only the human cost, but also the material and monetary cost of cancer rises with detrimental effects for the society, for people, and for the way that we live. And uh, still, Within the situation, if we take a bolder approach, a more comprehensive approach, we have very good chances of improving the lives of more than 3 million people in the coming few years. People who might get cancer, people who already have cancer, and people who are trying to survive, prolong their lifetime, but also improve their life conditions and at the same time provide for themselves and their own families. For this reason, the European Union and especially the European Commission has launched the EU mission on cancer, which is uh, an ex essentially a structure that includes an expert body, an advisory with an advisory capacity. This is the European Missions uh, Board, uh, the European Cancer Missions Board, where I have the pleasure to be one of the members. It focuses on four objectives that we will have the chance to see in creative detail. Understanding cancer, prevention, level detection, diagnosis and treatment, and quality of life. And uh, <clears throat> for all of these, there are some overarching principles. And an overarching principle that existed before and needs to be promoted is ensuring equity and access to knowledge and care. At the same time, the mission tries to promote innovation and strives this through involving non-traditional stakeholders such as patients, the civil society, the broader community, uh, notably the, the so-called methodology of living labs. Uh, also, it's an approach that gives a lot of space for reasonable and meaningful experimentation in the sense that everything can be a lesson and uh, of course, engages actively not only individuals, but those who have the power to implement change and influence the lives of a lot of people, namely states. So as mentioned, there are four key objectives. Understanding, which is essential for taking any meaningful and uh, capable action. This frame, one of major milestones that has already been achieved is the establishment of the Ancan EU platform, a digital platform where researchers share and have access to high quality research data. And of course, they're trying to coordinate funding, resources, and political and also scientific focus on big research questions that are key in order to developing new treatments and also improving treatment uh, prevention strategies. And for this reason, speaking exactly about prevention, uh, we know that there is, in the field of cancer, a lot of research, a lot of funding, and a lot of efforts that focus on novel new treatments 
novel new diagnostic tools, and this is something that we definitely need. However, what we don't have at such a great scale and what can still influence the lives of more than 50% of people who have or get cancer is prevention. And for this reason, the mission has taken a very solid stance on prevention with really concrete actions to support and promote the preventive mentality, not only as a practice, but also as a research field that can lead to evidence-based interventions, good practices, and changes of lifestyle and mentality, not only at individual, but also at collective entrepreneurial level in order to make sure that we all live in a relatively healthy environment where the chance of getting cancer is lower and therefore the resources for treating cancer remain available to those who get really non-preventable cancers. And speaking of this, although we can try to prevent and although prevention has a major potential, there are always the people who will get cancer. And uh, this is the ground why, the reason why diagnostics and treatment need to be optimized as well. And uh, optimized is, of course, something that has been tried for a lot of years through novel medical products, novel devices, groundbreaking tests and research methodologies, and all these are important. But it's even more important to put all these together in a framework where they are accessible to everyone and <clears throat> every member of the medical community, every member of the patient's community. For this reason, the mission supports uh, the creation of a network of comprehensive cancer infrastructure so centers where people will have access to the last word of technology and innovation in cancer diagnostics and treatment. And uh, this is, of course, done by also improving the way that we research cancer. And for this, this reason, the mission has done a lot of work into supporting new designs of clinical trials, new realistic designs of clinical trials, essentially pragmatic clinical trials that allow the assessment of the existing practices in the whole spectrum of oncology and not only the legiatis practices that are unfortunately common only in high level um, expert centers and but of course this uh, to be done with uh, the best scientific standards in order to get reliable results and at the same time the mission has done a lot of work into preventing decentralized clinical trials where not only reference centers, but also regional centers or even practices where, for instance, family medicine practices where cancer patients go for the uh, testing and uh, casual monitoring can be implemented into collecting and providing reliable data for the better treatment of cancer patients. And uh, speaking a lot about better treatment, access to care, uh, involvement of all the settings of care, we come, of course, to the issue of quality of life. And uh, for this reason, the mission does not only focus on expanding and improving the existing avenues of prevention or treatment, but also on establishing a very concrete approach to measuring quality of life indicators. And some steps towards this is, of course, a big focus on survivors, given that we talk a lot about treatment, we talk a lot about people who manage to survive, but we don't really know a lot about how the people who manage to survive are later coping with uh, their reintegration to family and professional and social life, also to the rehabilitation of any somatic, corporal, or mental, mental lesions that they have sustained through the process. And uh, of course, through also speaking uh, of the era of digital health by setting up the European Cancer Patient Digital Center that will enable patients all over Europe and hopefully beyond to access resources at their national languages that show how they can improve their quality of life, to what provisions they're entitled and how they can empower themselves and their communities. So 
this is of course a, a, ple a plexus, so a very complicated network of synergies that it's necessary in order to implement all, all this. We have, of course, support from political institutions in the European Union, and we will go into this. We have legislative initiatives, initiatives under Horizon Europe, and also initiatives under other frameworks, such as the EU for Health or Digital Europe. And at the same time, there is a very strong connection with uh, existing European initiatives and communities that enable these messages and these efforts to be channeled to scientists, patients, and societies that are involved in cancer care. And uh, of course, the governance is uh, joint of the mission. So uh, as we mentioned, we uh, have a board of 15 scientists who and practitioners who advise, but of course, in order for this board to have a voice and um, really achieve its goals, uh, there are many entities at administrative level that support every part of the process. Um, here, I will have to mention that uh, the European Commission is essentially a big ministry of the European Union. And there are two ministries that, involved, that are involved into grounding and supporting the missions. It's the Directorate General or Ministry, if you prefer this term, of Research and Innovation, and also the Ministry of Health or Directorate General, Santé, with Santé being the French course for health. And uh, of course, this is the European infrastructure, but the mission concept expands on EU member states with uh, the National Cancer Mission Hubs that represent it and promote research on uh, every, every uh, European country. And in this frame, apart from prom uh, promoting research and grouping uh, national scientists and practitioners, there are also efforts to spread awareness in ways tailored with uh, the uh, national needs. Uh, these are some only few, some of the projects that are providing funding into this. And you can see that it's one of the biggest uh, funding sources that we have had in the history of the European Union. And hopefully this is a paradigm for other countries and international coalitions. And uh, I will just have to also introduce the fellow members of the mission board here and uh, outline some of the activities that we have had so far. Citizen engagement, something that is very important in order to understand how cancer works and what people need from us. And also a lot of work on not only setting goals, but implementing them together with a lot of national and international partners within and outside health. Uh, these are some references that you can also access on your own to have more information. I would like to thank you for your attention. Uh, you can follow more updates uh, about the mission on the social media channels following the hashtags that you can see here. And I'm also very happy to respond to questions or channel feedback from your side to the committee in our next meeting. Thank you very much.